Okay, welcome everybody to the weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Orla. It's going to last about half an hour. It's going to cover some of the major indices, FX and commodities that you can trade through CMC markets. We've just got the risk warning on the screen at the moment. We're going to skip through that and get into it. Any questions at all, uh, definitely just let me know through the chat box and I'm happy to do my best to answer. So we've got a couple of the big events before the end of the year out the way. We have, we've got the ECB out the way, we've got OPEC out the way. Um, some pretty huge price moves resulting from those meetings and uh, the next one's the Fed. So as you can see, oil prices down pretty steeply today. Uh, that's on the back of even steeper declines on Friday. That's after OPEC failed to announce even any kind of quota. So normally it's 30 uh, million barrels per day, and so they couldn't even agree on that. Um, he couldn't even agree on expanding that. There were some initial reports that OPEC might produce, uh, might, might rise it to 31.5 but um, the statement actually amounts no number. So it looks like Saudi Arabia and Iran are two kind of big opposing um, political, par uh, political you know, parties, um, participants involved here, just couldn't come to some agreement. And, um, and as a result, oil prices are really pushing right down into these, um, these multi-year lows. And uh, here I've got a, a fairly short-term chart on crude oil WTI, um, showing that we're breaking down through that um, through that support in around 39 vicinity, and uh, we're breaking down right now. So the downtrend's resuming. If we pull out to a longer-term chart, you can see we're right here, right near these uh, multi-year lows. So obviously, the speed of this decline has um, has uh, slowed up. But we're still putting in some lower lows here. And it looks like we're probably going to put in another one down here. Um, and then this line at the bottom here, just around this 35 level, is uh, where we come in from, um, you know, the low putting in 2008. So getting a bit interesting here, below below 35, you know, that's when we start getting into the 20 type vicinity that um, a few have been forecasting. Looks like that genuinely could happen because OPEC's producing as much as it can, Russia's producing as much as it can, and U.S. shale, they're producing as and when it makes economic sense according to the price. Now, that can't go on forever, particularly on the U.S. side because they, there's been a pattern of uh, U.S. shale coming back online when prices bounce a bit. But, um, you know, the price is right down right now. So you, we're going to start start seeing that, um, well, we've already seen it, that uh, the number of U.S. rigs is going to decline and um, and inventories are going to start falling by the wayside too as those number of rigs come offline. So that's going to eventually support the price, but it's not happening at the moment. There's an excess supply situation going on at the moment. Obviously, the other big event um, was the, the ECB. So let's uh, pull up the, the main chart involved there. Um, just just trying to look at some of the short-term levels um, that could could cap this retracement that we're seeing in the euro at the moment. But obviously, this is uh, you know, it's, it's a 30-minute chart, but still, that's a, that's a fairly epic move that we saw during the ECB. And you can see from the uh, from the daily chart, um, pretty huge reversal. Um, engulfed the previous two weeks worth of price action, almost three weeks if we got up here. And uh, we're back in and around the uh, the 110 handle. We're pulling back now, so um, as of as we currently stand, we're right in that uh, 108 type vicinity, which is this previous peak here is a bit below, but just on the short on a short term basis. You can see on that 30-minute chart, I was just using where the price had paused during this incline to try and make some assessment as to where. There's also a bit of a potentially, you know, nothing really to show us on the downside. We can connect the lows a bit. Um, but it does, it's not a very good channel, but you can connect the lows in here quite well. And that would take us down to this line. If we were using the highs, then a new low would probably come in down at this, uh, this price peak here, um, where we reversed a little bit going into the press conference. So that's some levels to look out for, but um, I think, you know, uh, 
it, it would be hard to see a move this size just completely erased um, without pushing higher a bit. Now, my assumption here is that this is, um, the, yeah, it's basically a, a change of short-term trend. You know, we we're grinding, grinding, grinding lower, and now we've rapidly pushed higher. And I think we're going to eventually find some level in which people are willing to jump on board and go long again. Um, and maybe even more to the point, not willing to go short again through these lows, given the size of the reaction we had higher. So, you know, these levels to be considered, you know, this was the, um, this was a, a cap that we blew through quite easily here. So if these levels give way, we're down to here and obviously we're at the low. And then just based on that daily chart, you could see that we had this peak in here just below 107. I don't think that's going to be too instrumental. But um, as I see it, you know, we're still, if you pull out, uh, based on this chart, you know, we basically kind of undone a bit of this this short-term trend that was taking place here, and we've come off before reaching new lows. So to me, it's it's more like we've turned into a, a medium-term sideways market in a short-term uptrend, and now we're retracing within that uptrend is, is how I'm perceiving it. Uh, there's lots of, I mean, there's lots of side issues around the ECB. You know, I think generally the way we've got to look at it here is, you know, we've got to listen out for the ECB members, and a lot of them are going to be speaking this week. I'd mentioned in my morning note the uh, the highlights as I see it in terms of who's speaking. Um, there's quite a few, but probably three important ones in terms of really potentially market moving. But um, really, I'd be surprised if they, if they hint at additional stimulus having just taken action. They obviously, the, you know, the idea here is that they thought what was done was enough, and I would imagine that they want to see this play out in, in, in the economy first before starting to suggest that more needs to be done. That said, um, if inflation does remain well below target in and around the 0% mark, then um, you know, then there's always going to be this kind of background, uh, wondering when, when, if, and when they're going to do more, and you know, the, the market's going to start pushing for them to to increase stimulus at some point in time if that inflation remains low. There's a good chance that it won't because we're getting to the point now where we're almost a year past the um, the, the big fall in the oil price. Obviously oil still at those low levels, but that, that sort of um, yearly change um, which we use to, to judge inflation year over year, um, that oil price change is going to start coming out of the market around kind of March time. So we actually could see the year over year numbers start to reflect a more of a kind of leveling out and then starting to rise in, um, uh, in uh, sort of just the non-core benchmark inflation rate. So then that would suggest that actually the ECB isn't going to do any more or don't need to do more. So that's, that's got implications for the euro. Uh, and there's still a big divergence between the euro and the US and even the euro and the UK. Worth putting up the euro pound chart because we saw a big push high there. Potentially a uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern setting up here. It's not perfect. Uh, the patterns never are. The, the head is only slightly deeper than the, um, the left and right shoulder. Um, from that perspective, you could almost call it a, uh, a triple bottom, but potentially a big basing pattern here. And so then we'd, we'd look for the neckline. The most extreme one would probably just be up at those, those peaks here around 75. So having failed to drop through um, the 70 round number on three major occasions. If we were to push above 75, that could in, that could that could suggest that we're um, pushing all the way back up to 80. But obviously, there's still big policy divergence between the UK and the and the eurozone. We're still looking to raise rates in the UK. We've got the the Bank of England later this week. They are expected to, to keep rates on hold, and if they're going to continue the, the language from the inflation hearings, then it's going to be fairly dovish, and that could push expectations for a rate rise in the UK out to 2017. Uh, and so then 
given a slight kind of change in circumstance, um, slightly less easing than expected from the EZB, uh, even more dovish than expected from the Bank of England, um, could see this uh, this rate pushed back up to the 75 level again, because that 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 different that size of the difference between the two uh, two countries in um, in divert I mean the extent of the divergence has come in a bit um, if those two if the two central banks um, ease away from the extremes that we thought. Um, obviously, the other impact from uh, from the ECB last week was on equities. Prime example being the Germany 30. You can see this take place in uh, other markets. Well, this uh, weekly chart is looking a bit crowded, but just sort of going to show that we're still. It's difficult to see. Uh, basically, we took out this high here, which is where we saw we still got this potential double bottom pattern in. Uh, but we haven't really cleared out a next peak yet. Potentially, this might be a peak that we can use to say that we've formed a higher high. Haven't really, f uh, yeah. Here we formed a higher low, so kind of still uh, while above, while above the the week of the number number fifteenth low. Still kind of technically within an uptrend. So if we can hold above there, might be all right in the Germany thirty. But that is a pretty large bearish engulfing candlestick. On this weekly chart, looks even more extreme on the daily chart, and so a really aggressive sell-off has failed to take place because this free previous low has not acted as um, you know was support. Support broke, didn't turn into resistance. We pushed through it, so the next level I'll be eyeing is well, to some extent the 200-day moving average. It's not so reliable, but also just this peak from from over here on November 20th. Uh, some potential areas of um, of resistance to see this to, this trend roll over, but as I mentioned in the the chart forum here, what we're seeing is that we've made a higher high and then we've made a, a lower low. So that's basically telling us no trend. So what I wouldn't be surprised to see is us actually push up towards the top near this near this high somewhere, um, maybe, maybe even push through it and then roll over, or maybe just not quite get to it and roll over and just turn into more of a sideways market again. Um, kind of reminiscent of the kind of thing taking place here. Um, bit sideways, perhaps until a few days uh, before or after the Fed meeting, which of course um, takes place um, in just over a week um, on the, the 15th and 16th of December. Um, the other thing to look at is similar to, to what we did with the euro and just zoom in on the, the lower time frames to find some potential levels. Um, here, you know, this is that previous high that I've used. This this day, this is actually the kind of low of the day on um, on the second, so the Wednesday, I believe. Now that would also potentially be some area. Um, you can obviously also pull up some Fibonacci levels to see if they correspond. Um, but as I, as I mentioned, these would be areas to look for some sort of reversal um, for a continuation of the trend lower. But I, I don't actually think that that's going to happen right now. I don't think we're going to see some massive sell-off off the back of that um, decline in the Germany 30. I suppose what I'm basing a lot of that off is just the fact that we've pushed through this previous low and that we, even the very next day, we couldn't push any lower. So if we just stick with equities for now, let's have a look at the uh, UK 100. Here I pulled up a short-term chart again as well. Um, again, looking for potential areas where the, this rapid downtrend that we saw on Thursday could begin to roll over again. So you know, rapid downtrend retracement. We've um, fallen off a bit away from this 31.2, 38.2% uh, Fibo level. Kind of corresponds a bit with these, these, um, uh, you know, this low over here, and this hot peak over there. 
more about the fib level. Then we're moving back up into the 50, which I think we probably could get towards. And then we've got a, a, a couple of days where we saw quite sharp reversals that could have see some kind of, a, you know, a slight vacuum in in, uh, in volume in around those levels and see prices drop off again. So similar, similar kind of idea where we've had that extreme move down. We're looking for um, cheaper areas to sell into it on signs of reversal. But again, you know, we've, we've basically made a higher high. Now we've made a lower low. So it's it's basically speaking to us of no trend. And also just the fact that it was this these series of peaks up here that caused us to roll over in the first place kind of tells us that we're not going anywhere higher. And um, we've, we've kind of paused at this this low here. I suspect we could maybe get down to the, um, the 6,000, 6,000 level again. So that would be, you know, if you were selling from one of these retracement levels, then your first target would just be the, the, the December 3rd low. But if you were feeling more bearish, then you would start targeting the 6100 level just to sort of show that the market's in complete chop up and down here between basically between 6100 uh, and 6500. Okay. <clears throat> Over to US markets. You're probably going to notice a bit of a theme here. US markets notably stronger than that in Europe, obviously it's slightly you know more indirect beneficiaries of um, kind of kind of risk on mode in markets that um, quantitative easing brings about mm -hmm. so, so you can see here that this was thursday 's leg lower, not as extreme as we saw in the Germany thirty or even the u k one hundred and on Friday we had those non farm payrolls results. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty good number, basically in line with expectations, slightly weaker than the, uh, than was seen in um, October, but November's data was nonetheless in line with expectations. 100, over 100, over 200,000 jobs created, um, some signs of wage growth still, um, unemployment rate stayed at 5%. So basically, the, sort of the overall message was that not enough to derail the Fed hiking rates. So in FYI, in terms of the Fed, we got retail sales on Friday, and then we've got inflation data next week. Uh, they're, the ba they're basically the last two hurdles for the Fed to have to jump over, uh, for the data to jump over for the, um, for the Fed to um, decide on, on hiking rates. At the moment, um, looking at Fed fund futures, you hear this thrown around the percentage. It doesn't always necessarily mean a lot, but um, there's basically an 80% bet that uh, the Fed's going to hike, according to Fed fund futures at the moment, in December. So looking pretty odds on, uh, but, you know, should markets collapse? Um, we've got Chinese data this week. That's, that was the previous cause of the big August collapse. In fact, the very data that caused the collapse we have reported tomorrow. That's the Chinese trade data. So watch out for that. That comes out early morning tomorrow. Um, so that, that you know that may impact the open of European markets tomorrow. Um, that that could be a big one. Uh, we also have Chinese inflation data on Wednesday. Um, that, that's probably not going to show anything too cataclysmic. Um, and then we have retail sales and industrial production data on Saturday, um, which could set us up interestingly for Monday next week, which is obviously the week uh, of the Fed meeting. But the moment I've been talking about this in the chart form for a while is toying with a double top here, but just sort of um, based on a sort of 200-day moving average and the sort of general trend, assuming that it's going to be more of a consolidation topside breakout. But there's obviously significant resistance to the top side. You know, this peak from back in July, but then the all-time highs um, from uh, you know from early in the year, May and May and Feb. Is it May? Yeah. You'll notice definitely a bit of uh, bearish divergence taking place here. The bearish divergence can turn to um, a bit of a, um, a potential setup if you just get a break through that declining trend line there on the RSI. That kind of nullifies the divergence for me. 
and uh, and could see us push nicely higher. Coming into the uh, the last ten minutes of the uh, the webinar here, we've uh, covered a few currencies while just talking about the the ECB. Um, we've we've covered some of the major indices. Happy to talk about others if need be, but if not, I'm going to switch over to crude commodities. Now, this was the other interesting move. Um, this was not on the ECB. This was on the the jobs day. This was on Friday. Mm. So, as in the you know the fourth of December is when we saw this massive push higher in gold, which is interesting because um, the you know the data was pretty solid, um, indicates that uh, the, as I mentioned, basically confirms the idea the Fed set to a hike in December. Typically, the reason uh, you know the assumed reason for the sell-off in gold is that you don't want to be holding um, <clears throat> you know a non-interest bearing asset when um, interest rates are rising. You know, you want to kind of be there to take advantage of those rising interest rates um, and have your money in bank accounts or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> so, um, but, you know, on that strong U.S. data, gold actually rallied and, and, uh, and rallied ma pretty, pretty massively, broke this declining trend line. So... Obviously, this has been a pretty huge sell-off, and it's just slow. the momentum's just slowed heading into this um, long-term trend line here. And um, we've got a, a bullish engulfing candlestick in and around the bottom of this line. You know, and I think, um, you know, obviously this kind of trend is generally down. I think the, probably the better possibilities are, you know, more like along the top trend line here. You know, when you see top reversals, a generally higher probability in this scenario than, than bottom. But nonetheless, this is a couple of factors supporting it here. A strong bullish engulfing candlestick on a weekly chart, which obviously has more bearing than, um, than on the lower time frames. Almost took out three weeks, which adds strength. Didn't quite do it. Um, but to me, um, so, you know, Possibility of a, uh, a reversal here, and again, we're back into that same scenario of, okay, can we pick out some points on a retracement? I actually think if we are going to push higher, the retracement's not going to be too too large in gold. That's quite characteristic, is that it sees pretty shallow retracement. So even from here, where we're getting a bit of a bounce at the moment, just off these previous peaks, um, you know, that could be that could be as shallow as we get for another for another leg higher. Potentially, though, down to here, we've got a kind of double previous resistance, which could then act as support on a drop down. I suspect if we even get that low, then um, you know we'll probably dive all the way down and it will trace a good amount of the move, perhaps. And then still, I think still the bias would be to the top side. Then, you know, you've got to be aware here that you're kind of fighting the kind of longer term trend, but you've seen signs of a reversal of that trend. More so here in gold than I would argue in um, in equities. Um, obviously, turning from a sort of bull to, to bearish reversal. There, I've characterized them more in ranges. Here, I think there's a better chance of a turn to an uptrend here, just after the extent of this downtrend. Silver in a similar, in a similar ballpark to gold. Um, we had a really nice, you know, nice few false breaks here. Now, you know, if you've been paying attention to the daily chart and not just your intraday charts, you would have seen that you know, none of these breakouts were confirmed with a lower close. And um, on the sort of what was that fourth time lucky, we just got a, you know, couldn't push lower, and so we just, um, you know, the shorts gave up, and we saw a massive capitulation and drive to the upside. And uh, you know this has um, engulfed all these previous days here with just that you know just that one big move. So chance of a retracement, but I suspect it again. I think it's going to be a small one. I would say maybe. Haven't drawn it in here, but um, kind of looking at that is that what that's kind of if you are considering this a horizontal uh, resistance rather than the kind of declining resistance line that I have here. 
then I think that's probably the most, uh, you know, it's based in and around this, this low here. So if you want to capture the move for definite, you know, you're, you're going long fairly shortly, but if you're looking for a slightly better value, risking not catching the move because it never gets there, then back towards the, the kind of 14, uh, 40 dot vicinity, I think. Crude, we've already had a bit of a look at WTI. We can have a quick look at Brent now, maybe. Here you can kind of see that um, we're basically in a kind of sideways motion at the moment. We tried to push off the low here, didn't get very far, basically ran into the previous lows here, rolled over again before even getting there. It's looking pretty weak. <clears throat> um, you know, I would not probably this, you know, whereas gold, we're looking at a kind of um, uh, reversal of a trend to the top side. I don't think that's happening with oil. My default assumption is that we're breaking through um, this, this low from August and that we're heading lower. And then you have to look quite far out to, to start catching some kind of support. The main one, again, just like we had drawn in the um, WTI chart, is the, uh, the 2008 low. So I had mentioned the, the Bank of England this week. Um, <clears throat> Before we, uh, we do actually have um, Mark Carney speaking today, Governor of the Bank of England, speaks at 3 p.m. today, um, GMT. Um, we do have UK Manufacturing Industrial Production data tomorrow, uh, but that's all sort of leading into the uh, BOE rate decision on Thursday. So, you know, basically, the, uh, I think the way I tend to play this in terms of data releases before the policy decision is that you just look uh, you know, you pay attention to data, make a note of it, um, and then, you know, once the DOE rate decision is out of the way, then you can start to see that, 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 that data playing out in the price. So if we see some weak data, for example, maybe the pound doesn't sell off too heavily because you don't know quite what the Bank of England is going to, how they're going to position. So you, you hold fire. And then, you know, once the Bank of England is out of the way, um, if there's nothing too much of a change, which I don't think anyone really expects it to be, probably just still fairly dovish then you can kind of get back on board and, you know, maybe if, if there was weak data, for example, um, start selling a pound. But technically we're in this, it's difficult, the top trend line is not perfect by any means. Um, better, the bottom trend line is a bit better. But we're in a sort of declining channel now. And uh, we've, seen, we've seen a strong, strong bullish reversal candlestick pattern um, with, with bullish divergence as well using the RSI, um, suggesting there's some scope for a bit of a bounce back towards the top channel line. And um, the 200 day and that peak from November, uh, November 19th and the declining channel are all sort of in that same sort of vicinity. So there's a good chance that we push up to that 153 type, type area. Got to be aware that we're below the 200 day, so any reversal candlestick patterns perhaps err on the side of caution. But, um, but you know, regular, regular candles, you know, then 53 looks like a, a solid area. We'll qu quickly touch on the dollar yen. Oh, actually, no, what we'll do, we'll look at dollar Swiss, because the other interesting event this week is the Swiss National Bank. <coughs> they are um, <coughs> they're, they're rate meeting this week. And a lot of what they were going to do, I think, rested on what the ECB did. And so um, we had, uh, in the base of the ECB, sort of failure to really ramp up the stimulus has obviously resulted in the euro spiking. And so um, there hasn't been a big sell-off in, in euro Swiss. <coughs> I pulled up dollar Swiss here. Um, probably the slightly better one for trading Euro Swiss is a bit complicated after the um, giving up the peg. <coughs> but you can see, you know, last week, yeah, we closed lower, but barely, <coughs> still inside the kind of recent range. And so, um, <coughs> you know, basically we're not looking at a situation where this Swiss franc is about to rally massively and uh, because the Euro is weakening so much, actually the Euro has gained value, so, the, you know, the Swiss franc's 
devaluing slightly. So that takes the pressure off the Swiss National Bank doing anything. Um, I think there's a possibility they maybe will just kind of cut their rates maybe to match the ECB, just so that there's a consistent differential. So the ECB cuts by 10 basis points. Maybe the Swiss National Bank will do the same. I'm not really sure to what benefit they'd have in, in really going aggressive and cutting by, say, 25 basis points. Um, <clears throat> because they just didn't need this point. The ECB's kind of done the work for them. So as I mentioned, this chart, bit choppy, hard to trade, but uh, potentially look at that dollar yen chart, uh, that dollar Swiss chart. Yeah, we're in an uptrend, but we've had a retracement. Look for the opportunities there. Just coming off this, off from this peak. Okay, my voice is giving way, so I think I'm going to call it a day there. Hope that was useful. Good luck trading this week. Jasper all signing out.